Hello, hello. Welcome along to this Electric Ireland uh, virtual Game Changers event. We hope you enjoyed our Day of the Girl video that you've just seen. We have created it and this whole event today to celebrate International Day of the Girl. My name is Anne Smith and I am the Sponsorship Lead for Electric Ireland in Northern Ireland. And my job is to look after the Game Changers sponsorship that we have with the Irish FA. So the Game Changers sponsorship has been running for about three years and the core objectives of it are to increase participation of girls and women in football, to increase um, people being able to watch girls and women play football and also to increase the conversations around our dinner tables on social media and in the print and broadcast media. The whole campaign is around celebrating women in sport and we had this idea for this virtual celebration Back in May, we knew we wanted to deliver a piece of activity that was going to really add value to the women in sport community in Northern Ireland. We wanted something that was going to be practical and useful to athletes, to coaches and to parents. So that's why we've created this event and we're really pleased that you're here with us. We'd love it if you would engage with us today and you can do that by logging on to GameChangersNI.com where you can share your comments. You can ask questions. You can also um, go on to any social media platform and use the hashtag GameChangersNI just to um, have conversations about today. We have a brilliant lineup that we're going to deliver to you today. And we're going to start in a few minutes when I stop talking um, with Tony and Jen, but I'll introduce them in a moment. After Tony and Jen, we're going to speak to Jane McKenna from Vital Nutrition. So Jane is a force of nature when it comes to nutrition. She has so much energy around how we can eat better, feel better and perform better. After we speak to Jane, and you can ask questions at any point through the GameChangersNI.com website. After we speak to Jane, we're going to have a panel discussion. Um, and we have, we're really pleased. We asked five leading athletes in Northern Ireland to be part of this and they all said yes. So they were our top choices. We have Simone McGill who plays football for Everton and Northern Ireland and started at Middlestar Ladies. Simone won her first cap for Northern Ireland when she was 15 years old. She um, has the inter she has the fastest international goal record for women's football. We also have Katie Mullen, the Irish women's hockey captain. Hannah Shields, I don't know where we start with Hannah, she has climbed Everest, she has been to the North Pole, she's just an incredible woman. We have Gemma Begley, who is former Tyrone captain and um, footballer and the current self-proclaimed doer at the Ladies Gaelic Players Association. And we have Dr Claire McLaughlin, who is an NHS doctor and international rugby player for Ireland. We then move on to Kelly Fair performance psychologist and she is able um, to talk to us about how making small changes to our day-to-day -day can really impact our performance. Huge amount of experience having worked with British Power Sports, having worked with Ulster Rugby and Swim Ireland. So any questions throughout the afternoon and we're here till seven o'clock, please just log on to GameChangersNI.com and um, we'll be able to respond. First up, we've got Tony and Jen. So Tony and Jen are really well known in the Northern Ireland food scene. Tony um, is a performance nutritionist and does a lot of work with elite athletes. And Jen is a former uh, journalist in health and lifestyle turned chef and has the ability to make any healthy food look and taste amazing. So they have two brilliant recipes for us now. And um, they'll make you hungry. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. So sit back, enjoy. And I'll see you after Tony and Jen, where we'll connect Jen from Vet Nutrition. Okay, thanks guys. Hey guys, we're Tony and Jen. I'm Jen and I'm in charge of the cooking. So it's my fault if it doesn't taste nice. You can't blame Tony. <laughs> <laughs> we're so excited to be a part of this event, celebrating all the amazing women in sport in Northern Ireland. And I am Tony, a performance nutritionist, and it's my job to look after athletes, making sure they are fueling the right way and recovering to their optimal ability. So we have a couple of recipes for you. We've got one really fancy pantsy one for whenever you've got a little bit more time or you've somebody even coming over to have your pre-match meal with you. Um, so that is a apple pie oat with a peanut butter caramel. And then we have a really speedy one that will be able to be whipped up in a flash if you just don't have time 
or if you really can't be bothered. <laughs> Um, so we'll get started on the first one anyway, let's get into the oats. So first up we're going to make a quick frying pan granola. You can use a store bought granola if you want, but this is a really handy wee recipe. So we've got a tablespoon of coconut oil going in there, a tablespoon of maple syrup, a quarter cup of jumbo oats, Good pinch of salt, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, and then I have a tablespoon of pecans and a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds in here. So the jumbo oats, are they better than just regular oats? Yeah, they just give like a really nice body to the granola, um, otherwise it can be a little soft and not as nice flavour wise. So we'll give everything a really good mix around and then we're just going to get this onto a medium heat. If your cooker is really strong, you might need to go a little bit lower than that because this is going to slow cook the whole way while we do the rest of the recipe. So while the granola cooks, the next thing we're going to do is we'll get our apple ready. So we want to get it nice and soft and the easiest way to do that is to throw it into the microwave. So we'll start off by cutting it in half and then into quarters and just get the core out. If there's no microwave available, do you just put it into a pan for a few minutes? That's a good question. Actually, yeah, you can soften it down in a pan. Um, I would tend to do it with a little bit of water just to make sure it doesn't burn. And the lid on, and that'll help steam it up a little bit faster. So with these, we're just going to do a rough dice. So with each quarter, if you cut it down one side and then flip it over and cut it the other way, and then just dice it off. The smaller your dice is, the quicker it'll cook, so it depends how hungry you are. Plus, would you also want the consistent then and say so that one doesn't cook quicker than the other? Yeah, it is definitely preferable um, to have it like that. Obviously, we're not cooking for a restaurant here, so it doesn't matter as much if some are a little bit firmer than others. Um, some people might like that change in texture. So these are all going into a microwavable bowl. This is the same bowl that we're going to serve our oats in. So it saves us any hassle with having to wash extra stuff up. And then we're going to add in some more cinnamon. So we've got three quarters of a teaspoon of cinnamon going in here. And then we've got some nutmeg, just a generous pinch of nutmeg. It's pretty powerful stuff. And then we're just going to give this a quick shuffle around and then fire it into the microwave. Thank you. So that'll take anywhere between one and two minutes, depending on how good your mic is. Okay, Jen, so we've got the granola cooking, mm -hmm. the apple on, what is next? So next up is the main part of it, the oats. So the apple is cooking, that's the apple pie-ness. So we're just gonna put in a half cup of oats here. And again, that's jumbo oats once again. Jumbo oats, oats yeah. <laughs> and then a tablespoon of protein powder and a tablespoon of raisins and then a teaspoon of maple syrup. Okay, so whenever it comes to a competition, this is a great concoction of different carbohydrates. So we've got dried fruit that's going to bring a different energy source. It's going to bring a little bit of fiber that will slow digestion down. We've got fiber in the oats. We've also got maple syrup that will be a slightly faster release. So there's a nice, like, complex array of energy going into this meal. And then the protein powder too, so we're flying, ready to go. Absolutely. Cool, so we'll get this cooking then. So I'm just keeping a constant eye on everything I've got on the cooker. I can smell the granola wafting through the air. It does smell good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and just making sure that nothing's catching. So if you're not totally confident or comfortable with that, keep your cooker down low. You can always turn it off whenever you're standing, staring at it and making sure that nothing burns. So the final component is our peanut butter caramel. My favorite bit. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Um, so the first thing we're going to put in is a quarter cup of nut butter 
And then we've got two tablespoons of coconut oil. Gently with our nut butter being like as solid as it is, what if it's runny? Like the texture is a lot, lot more loose. So it's fine um, if people just follow the recipe as it is right now, we can adjust the water we're adding later, depending on people's textures oh, of nut okay. butter. So what we've got here is a quarter cup of peanut butter, two tablespoons of maple syrup, and two tablespoons of coconut oil. And you're gonna whack that in the mic for me for 30 seconds and get it all nice and soft. So a quick blast in the mic means that it's a lot softer and easier to mix. Um, even still, I'll get Tony to do that for me. So if you're doing this at home, you'll need to just be quite patient with it. Um, it can kind of slosh out of your bowl. So if you just kind of like cautiously mix it until everything's really well combined. And while Tony mixes that, I'll grab the rest of bits and pieces and finish off the granola. Everything's in here, I'm just gonna chuck in a tablespoon of desiccated coconut. Give it another mix again, and then get it back onto the heat. I'll turn the heat up a touch now. So we've had it on quite low, I'm gonna turn it up to medium heat. I'll check in on my oats as well while I'm at it. So this looks great, like it's really nice texturally. It's, it's like a caramel like you would expect to see. Um, if you had a thicker nut butter, then you might need to add a little bit of water, which is what we have here. I would always start lower and add more. So you could start off with a half a tablespoon of water, add it in and mix it and see what it's like. Similarly, if it's too runny to begin with, you'll wanna add a little bit more peanut butter and that will help thicken everything up. So that's all the bits and pieces ready. We just need to assemble everything and then eat. So everything is all cooked up now. The granola is nicely toasted, oats are cooked, caramel is made, and the apple is softened. So I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of raisins into the granola. Wanna give it a wee mix around for me, please? Thank you. That smells great. Yeah, it's really seasonal right now. So then I've added the apple into the oats. I'm gonna give it a really good mix around again. And then we're gonna start, start layering up. So with the granola, I'm gonna add a spoonful of the granola onto the base of this. Then I'm gonna add my oats on top. I'll add another spoonful of granola and then some caramel. And I'm gonna top it off with a little bit of yogurt as well. So I'll grab that from you, thank you. So guys, on this recipe, it's roughly around 600 calories for the full portion. It's always gonna be dependent on what your activity is. So a regular 10 stone person in a football game will burn around 1200 calories. That's just a rough, broad estimate. So with this being 600 calories, bear that in mind. If it's a, an afternoon, an early afternoon game or midday, this may be your only meal um, pre-game. So. Make sure you have stuff for half time, replenishment, um, or just pre-game, just before it starts. I'd probably recommend allowing around three hours for digestion. So if it was a 2 p.m. kickoff around 11 a.m., you would be having this final meal. It's very high in carbohydrates. It's very important for intermittent sports. And just chew your food as much as you can. Digestion starts in the mouth. So the more you digest your food, the easier it's broken down into energy stored in your cells and the likelihood the better you will perform. And with anything, any new foods that you may be unsure of, be sure to try this before training or something less important, just in case it does cause any sort of upset tummy or anything you'd like to add to that. No, um, so what we've got here is we've got our granola on the bottom, our oats on top of that, a little bit more granola, some caramel on that, and a little dollop of yogurt, and that is everything here ready to go. So, looks great. Yeah, feel free, get stuck in. So this second recipe is our game changer smoothie recipe. This is a really quick one. 
that you can whip together with stuff that's mostly in your freezer and it means that you don't necessarily have to sit down and eat a big meal. So in here we've got some milk, some oats, nut butter, frozen berries, frozen banana and some protein powder. Yeah, so as Jen mentioned, though, the first recipe was designed for if you have the time to sit down before training or again you've got the three hours to allow for digestion, great. But if you ever find yourself in a rush or you're stuck at work and you can't sit down for a proper meal, then a smoothie is a great alternative. It's full of nutrients, it's full of energy and it's, it's very quickly digested. So like I said, if you've had a 60, 75 minute window before game and you don't have time to get proper food on board, this is a great alternative. Okay, cool, so we'll get started. So we have oats in here. These will help, obviously they'll fill you up, but they also will help give the smoothie a lot of body. So it's a really nice thick smoothie. Also, we've got some frozen fruit for the same reason. So we have 50 grams of frozen raspberries. And just on the point though, the chain is mentioned frozen raspberries and soon to mention frozen, frozen blueberries. blueberries. Is that we now know that frozen fruit and frozen veg is just as good as fresh stuff, so it's it's often a lot more convenient to have stuff in your freezer rather than worrying about it going off. So please bear that in mind that it's a great alternative. Yep, so we have a third cup of oats in here. We have 50 grams of frozen raspberries, 50 grams of frozen blueberries, and then a whole frozen banana. We froze this up in little slices so it's easier for our blender to tackle. Would a regular banana work in this instance? You could use a regular banana, but we always have a wee stash of them in the freezer, so if you don't happen to have bananas, then you'll always right, okay. have some there in store, but as well as that, um, it also helps to make the smoothie really nice and thick and creamy. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add in a teaspoon, of nut butter, just whatever nut butter you fancy. We're using um, almond butter here. And then we're gonna put in a tablespoon of protein powder. And then we'll finally just top it off with whatever milk you like to use. We're using almond milk here, right up to the max fill level. And then if you're using a blender like this, it does help to give it a shake. And we'll just do a couple of blasts and get it nice and smooth. And just a wee reminder on that, whenever you are using frozen fruit, as in this instance, that your blender will have to work a little bit harder because it is more solidified um, to break it down. So just be patient with the motor in your blender because I have <laughs> destroyed a lot of blenders over the years. That's why I make the smoothies now. <laughs> so you can obviously drink it straight from this if you want. Um, that's the joy of these kind of blenders. Or you can throw it in your protein shaker but we have also done up a very lovely glass of the Jen moment. has done up a lovely <laughs> glass, I wouldn't have the patience. <laughs> With a little bit of nut butter drizzled on the inside and then we're just gonna pop the smoothie in here. All for the gram, Jen, eh? And yes, obviously we have our gold straw for the same reason as well. So th this recipe's great and like Jen mentioned at the start there, it's a classic. You'll, I think it's around 360 calories. Yeah. Um, will accompany the recipe, obviously, um, as side notes. But yeah, if you've got 60 minutes before training or a game and you need some sort of energy on board, you will likely have most of this stuff at home anyway if you are active and you participate in sport. So yeah, it's a great option. Cool. Okay guys, so just a quick recap. It's very important to chew your food as much as you can. Digestion starts in the mouth. Consider that the bigger volume of food that you eat, the longer it will take to digest. 
everyone is different. Some people will digest food slightly quicker than others. You will roughly know your sweet spot, but around three hours for a meal, pre-game or pre-training, should be enough time for digestion. And finally, just be careful with trying foods that you're unsure of before competition. Probably best to test it out uh, before a training game or training setup, where if you do feel uncomfortable, then you're not missing out on the competition. Okay, so what you're telling me to do is to eat the oats and then go hit the gym. Absolutely. <laughs> Maybe I'll have a shake after as well. Like, thanks so much for having us on here at Electric Garden. Thank you to everyone else that's involved the rest of the day. And thank you to you for watching it um, and for hopefully giving our recipes a go. We're really intrigued to see how you get on and also how they fuel your performance or your sport. Yeah, absolutely guys. Sport's been a massive part of my life and I've had so many great times with it. So please continue to play it as long as you can and remind yourself that movement is medicine. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Tony and Jen. That was brilliant. I think everybody will agree that they have um, lots of super ideas. I love that phrase from Tony that movement is medicine. And I think we could all do well to keep that in mind. Also brilliant to know about the um, nutritional value frozen to fresh vegetables and fruit. So I'm going to stock up my freezer as well as buying a new smoothie maker. I think I need to up my smoothie game. So thanks, Tony and Jen. I think those recipes are really useful for everybody. So next up, we have Jane McLenahan from Vital Nutrition. Jane has a huge amount of energy for eating well and making simple and small decisions to improve your nutrition and to improve your performance through nutrition. So Jane's just going to talk through some simple tasks that can help. Um, she's going to talk about how every decision we can make with our nutrition can um, help our performance. So I'm really excited to hear from Jane. And after we hear from Jane. Jane and I will be having a chat so please do put your questions into gamechangersni.com and be able to ask Jane a question yourself. Okay thanks here goes Jane. Hello my name is Jane McLenahan and for the next section in this Game Changers event I am going to be your own personal nutritionist. So I run a small business called Vital Nutrition. I've written a couple of books about food and nutrition and, and a cookbook and I support women and young women all over Ireland to make positive healthy changes to their diet for the good of their health. So you want to up your game. You want to be at the top of your game in terms of your sport. And a real cornerstone of that is the food that you choose to eat. So you've already met with Tony and Jen and they have taken you through a couple of brilliant recipes. So you've got a, a great granola there. So things are going to really power you and fuel you really well and taste good as well. That's got to be the most important thing. We can talk about nutrition all day if you want, but please make sure that the food that you're eating, you're enjoying it. So the things that I'm going to talk to you about, don't feel like you have to change everything at once. Just nudge your diet in the right direction. And by making small changes, you will notice that gradually your energy levels will improve, your recovery time will improve, your muscle function and your muscle power will improve, your speed will improve. So food really does have that power, it does have that potential, but you don't have to change everything at once. So the first thing that I wanna to talk to you about is calories. Calories are units of energy. You need lots of them. You need lots of units of energy, but you need energy from the right type of source. So we get energy from protein, fat and carbohydrate. And I want to really focus in on those three sources of energy and get you thinking about the types of protein, fat and carbohydrate that are in your diet 
right now and how that is affecting your sport. Okay, so let's start off with let's start off with carbohydrate. We'll do the other way around. We'll do carbohydrate, fat, protein. So let's start off with the type of carbohydrate. What does carbohydrate do for us? It gives us energy. And there's two types of carbohydrates. So we've got our high GI, our fast release rocket fuel kind of carb. So that's things like white rice, white bread, white pasta, sugar fits in there as well, fast release. And we've got our low GI, our slow release carbohydrate. So that's things like brown rice, porridge oats, wholemeal pasta, wholemeal bread. Get it? So it's the brown stuff, the white stuff, pretty basically. And there is a place for both of those in everybody's diet. But if you can predominantly think about the whole meal stuff, the brown stuff, the slow burn stuff, that's going to really support you, not just on the day of a match, but right throughout, throughout your week. And I think that's the message that I want to get across to you as much as possible. It is brilliant to have a really good pre-match meal. It's superb to fuel your body well after you've been training. But don't just think about those times. Think about what you do as an all-rounder. Think about this as a whole plan, rather than just kind of picking times in your week when you need to eat well. The better you eat, the better your performance is going to be. So, going back to those carbohydrates then, think about the type of carbohydrate you have in your diet. What type of things do you have for breakfast? Is it cornflakes? Is it toast and jam? Or is it something like porridge or the granola that Tony and Jen showed you earlier? If you're eating things like porridge, so you know your chunky jumbo oats, or if you're eating something like a, a low sugar granola, then what you're getting is slow burn energy. And that's gonna fuel you for longer and keep you so much more sustained. It's gonna mean that your muscles and your body has a steady supply of energy to keep you going. It also means that you're not gonna crash and burn as soon as you use that instant energy of things like white bread or cornflakes or Cheerios. So get the whole grains in there and think about, you know, keeping your sugar as low as possible. It also helps to think about the type of bread that you're having. So again, if you're having white bread, try something like wholemeal pita pockets or um, your wholemeal bread. If that's a step too far, then just go for something like 50-50 or best of both. Just nudging your diet in the right direction and getting a little bit more fiber in there is gonna make a big difference to how sustained your energy is going to be. The other thing about carbohydrate is that after you've been done a hard training session or after a match, your glycogen levels, which are your energy stores, are going to be low. So you want to replenish those so that you can have really good and quick recovery, so that you don't get too much muscle soreness the next day, and also so that you can train just as efficiently and just as effectively day in, day out, without risk of or reducing your risk of injury. So think about the one hour after you've been training. That's really important, a really important time. And what you eat there is really important. So you want something to be a bit faster at that time. So that could be something like maybe a banana. So a super snack to have after your training would be something like a toast with peanut butter and banana. So your toast, whole meal ideally, is giving you slow release energy. Your banana is giving you some fast release energy to get straight into those muscles and help um, refuel your glycogen. And your peanut butter is giving you some protein that's going to help with repair of your strong, healthy muscles. So carbohydrate, the message there is to go low and slow, low GI and slow release. Now let's think about protein. We've been talking about the peanut butter. So I think everyone who has ever done anything to do with sports or sports nutrition knows that how important protein is. It's not the be all and end all. It's not the only nutrient you need to think about, but it is important for muscle function and muscle repair. So 
Key uh, sources of protein in our diet could be things like eggs, so maybe your boiled eggs, poached eggs, scrambled eggs, and um, it could be meat, fish, chicken, it could be nuts, nuts and seeds, it could be things like beans and lentils, and it's about getting a variety of these foods into your diet as much as possible. So it doesn't have to be animal-based protein. It doesn't have to be meat and fish and chicken and dairy products. But having a variety, so including things like, for example, um, your chickpeas, things like your walnuts, um, and the, the different types of seeds that we can include in our diet are gonna give you variety. And the more variety you have in your diet, the more nutrients you're getting in your diet, and the better it is for your game and, and your performance and your recovery. One of the things in terms of animal protein that is important is that it's gonna give you some B12 and it's gonna give you some iron. And we need both of these for energy. So if you are um, following a vegetarian or a vegan diet, you need to work harder and be more careful about including iron rich sources or iron, iron rich foods such as um, things like blackstrap molasses and things like dried fruit in your diet and perhaps supplementing iron and also I would encourage you if you're following a vegan diet to make sure that you're taking a b12 supplement as part of a vegan multivitamin and mineral. Okay, so we've talked about slow and re low, re slow release and low GI carbohydrate. We've talked about protein. What about portion sizes here? So your, pro your protein, you need to have a palm sized portion of protein with each meal. So a little chicken breast, a couple of tablespoonfuls of beans or lentils, um, maybe a couple of eggs for, for breakfast, for example. About a palm sized portion is ideal. Now let's think about fat. So remember what I was telling you about with energy. You need those calories, you need that fuel, you need the energy. So you've got your, your carbohydrates, you've got your protein, you need fat. If you're doing a lot of high impact sport, um, things like your running or soccer or hockey, uh, things that will mean that your joints are under more pressure, your joints need to be kept flexible. And inside your ball and socket joint is something called synovial fluid, which keeps those joints moving really freely. So we need to oil your joints. And the way that you oil your joints through nutrition is eating good fats, number one. So your good fats can be things like oily fish. So it could be stuff like, uh, what have we got there, mackerel. Tuna is okay, it's not as good as mackerel or sardines, but also things like salmon. Um, and what I would encourage you is if you're buying fish, make sure, do you see that little thing on there that's the, that says MSC? Make sure that you're getting fish from a sustainable source. So that's what that means. So it's recommended that we have oily fish twice a week in our diet. And particularly if you're doing really high impact sport to protect your joints. Oily fish is also important for things like to reduce inflammation in your body. So to help recovery, um, to reduce uh, muscle soreness and also to prevent injury. Those fats are so important. It's not just oily fish that we get our good fats from though. So we can also, we've talked a lot about these, get them from things like our nuts and seeds, walnuts, peanut butter. I've also got for you some cashew nut butter. You can get almond nut butter as well and things like flaxseed. So you can sprinkle that onto into yogurt or put into your granola or your porridge or your overnight oats and it doesn't really taste of anything. So that's a great one too. So remembering to get these good fats in. Another one, olive oil. So, so make sure that you're using olive oil in the kitchen and not sunflower or vegetable oil, which can increase inflammation um, and increase risk of injury because of the inflammation. So getting those good fats into your diet, really important. Tony and Jen have also talked to you about coconut oil. It's a really great oil for cooking with. It's very stable and you can heat it up to high temperatures. And please use butter and do not use margarine. It tastes better and it is better for you. So carbohydrate, protein, good fats. What else do you need in your diet? The cornerstone 
of a healthy diet has got to be our fruit and veg. We know, I know that you know, that we should be eating at least five portions of fruit and vegetables a day. But what does that mean? What is a portion size? It's that, it's the size of your fist. So one fist size portion is one, one portion of fruit or veg. So it could be an orange or an apple or a banana. But equally, if it's vegetables, so something like this little cauliflower, it's gonna be about a quarter of that cauliflower. Or if it's something like your greens, like your spinach, it's gonna be a cupful of your greens, like your spinach or your rocket or your watercress. So the more color you have in your diet, the better. And I wanna to talk to you about greens and I wanna to talk to you about purples and reds. Color in your diet represents or, or is uh, determines how many antioxidants you're getting. And antioxidants basically are your, the, the diet's protectors for your cells. So they're so important for recovery and so important that if you do end up with an injury to help you with repair as well. So in this stuff, spinach, broccoli, um, cabbage, leeks, rocket and watercress, anything of bright and vivid and vibrant green is a brilliant source of magnesium. And magnesium helps our muscles to function properly. But we need magnesium along with calcium. So we get both in here, and we also get our calcium in our dairy products. We'll come to that in one second. But make sure that you're eating your greens every day, at least one portion of greens a day, and they can be fresh or frozen. Like you could stick that into a smoothie if you wanted to, or into a soup, blitz it up, add it into maybe a curry, you wouldn't even know it's there. So um, get your greens in. The other color in your diet that is super duper important are purples and reds. So you might be thinking, what are, what are purples and reds? What, what fruit or veg would give us purples or reds? And I'm talking berries and cherries. So I've got some raspberries there, some cherries there. And here I've got some really nice, can you see that? Was that me tipping it out? Blueberries and yogurt. So these little jewel-like fruit in our diet are going to help with repair and recovery. They taste gorgeous and they are super duper for your immune system as well. When you're training at a high level, and if you're training every day, what, one of the things that can happen is that your immune system can end up becoming depleted. So the food that you eat and your rest and your relaxation and your recovery is super important for um, supporting your immune system. So is color in your diet. So get in your blues and your purples and your reds. Get in your greens and your oranges and your yellows and eat a rainbow every single day. If you really struggle to get your five a day into your diet, think smoothies, think replacing things like um, jarred sauces with tin tomatoes, think putting frozen fruit or frozen vegetables into anything that you're making and gradually make your intake of your fruit and veg really creep up. Okay, I want to talk to you about calcium and about dairy products as well, because you need, as well as muscle strength, you also need good bone density and good bone strength as well. And it's well known that um, young women, so age kind of uh, late teens, early 20s, that is where our bone density reaches its peak. So it is so important to make sure you're getting sufficient calcium in your diet. And that is, and especially because of your training. So that's gonna come from things like dairy products, so things like this, like your natural unsweetened yogurt is super. Um, so is milk and cheese, good sources of calcium. But if you don't eat dairy products, then again, maybe a supplement might be recommended or sesame seeds, tahini are an amazing source of calcium. Nuts and seeds every day, getting that nut butter that I showed you into your diet as much as you can. Get the calcium in. Yes, you do get some from dark green leafy veg, but nowhere near what you're gonna get from dairy products. Okay, so let's think about how we put all of this together. This is really just a taster. And I hope I have given you some ideas about how you can nudge your nutrition to make sure that you are at the top of your game.
But the one thing that is going to empower you as young women to support your health and your well-being as much as possible is learning how to cook. Get yourself into the kitchen. And sometimes I talk to young women and they say, but I haven't got time. I've got all my training and my matches and I've got all my homework and all the other demands that life puts on you. But make time because this is your opportunity to really maximize your potential and realize how the connection between the food that you eat and your physical health and your physical strength, your optimum performance, as well as your mental well-being and your immunity and your digestion and your hormone balance and your skin health and all those other things, the power is in your hands to make such a difference. So if you can't cook, if you have no idea how to boil an egg, then start with the basics. So I would suggest that you start with something like scrambled egg and toast, or learn how to make an omelette, or think about your absolute favorite dinner and learn how to make that. So is it curry? Learn how to get yourself a curry recipe. There's so many brilliant, amazing websites online now. Um, or is it spaghetti bolognese? Think about how you can really pack in more nutrition into your spaghetti bolognese by using things like your tin tomatoes, adding in things like grated carrot or extra onion or extra peppers into your spag ball, you know? Or maybe you're into things like um, you want to explore different options and different maybe vegetarian or vegan options. Set yourself a challenge and set yourself a challenge of learning how to cook a handful of recipes. And I really mean a handful, five. If you can cook spaghetti bolognese, a curry, a chili, an omelet, and a granola or overnight oats, you are miles ahead of the game. You really do have the potential to optimize your performance, help recovery, fuel your game, fuel your matches, fuel your body to the best of your ability. I hope this has all given you ideas and I really hope that you will make changes or maybe that it's reminded you about something that you hadn't thought about for a long time or that you had forgotten. So I am here to answer your questions. So fire them through and let's see what you've got for me. Jane, thank you. That was brilliant. Um, really reassuring as well. I'm not doing everything completely wrong. Very useful and practical. So I think we'll now just jump into the Q&A. Okay, so I have, good. I have a couple of questions before we go into the questions that have come through. So one of them um, was around females in sport and how sometimes our monthly cycle can mean that we're a bit depleted with iron. Do yes. you have any hand, handy tips around... Um, how to consume more iron. Yeah, I think it's a really important aspect that actually sometimes is kind of forgotten about. So red meat is the best source of iron. And, you know, even if you maybe, I, I know that we're kind of recommending not to have too much red meat, but if we're having that maybe once or twice a week in that run up to our period and after our period as well. So even just simple things like spaghetti bolognese, yeah. or if you really want, that's, that's the week to have your steak, you know? Lovely. If you're, maybe if you're following a vegan or a vegetarian diet, then you can get some iron from things like dried fruit, like prunes, but also lentils and chickpeas. You need to work harder and it's not as well absorbed. So it may also be worth taking a supplement, even just for that that time especially if you find that your energy is starting to flag and because a lot of uh, the girls and women that are involved in this and, and watching this are doing really intense exercise actually then they're more at risk of low iron as well so it is definitely something you need to check out on good question okay and um, we elect ireland are partnered up with niffle on the academy league and we have a question from holly who plays for crusaders on the 19th and um, so she's going to ask you a question now. Okay, great. Can you see that? Um, like, what would you eat before, like, you go to training? Because sometimes I would eat stuff and it would just like sit in my stomach. Oh, training. 
feeling full. Okay. So obviously Holly asked about that horrible feeling of eating before training and then the food just sitting in your stomach. So what, what would you recommend for, for that? Yeah, something really light. So actually, Tony and Jen's smoothie would be yeah. really good. Um, so smoothies. And also I would look at maybe something like a plant-based protein shake. You know, a lot of those have got things like flaxseed in there or hemp seed protein, pea protein. They're very gentle on the digestive tract. Okay. And you can just mi mix those up with your milk or your water or plant-based milks if you're a vegetarian or vegan. And that can be just much more gentle on your system yeah. than having a big meal before you train. Yeah, it's a bit of a Northern Irish thing, isn't it? To fill up your stomach before you go, but then oh, yeah. you feel awful. Yeah, um, and, and, and we also talk about having good packing, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Another question that came in um, through Facebook was, how important are carbs? So carbs sometimes get a bit of a bad rap and um, bad press, but how important are they for us? Okay, they are essential. We do need our carbohydrate, but the important thing is the type of carbohydrate that we're eating. So what I would encourage women and girls to eat is the slow sustained release. So the whole grains, the sweet potato, potatoes with skins on, you don't want the rocket fuel. Most of the time, you know, there's time for those simple carbohydrates occasionally, but if you can eat that slow, sustained release carbohydrate, and a good way to think about it is imagine the balance that's on your plate. So ideally, you want about a fist-sized portion of carbohydrates, and especially because, the, you know, if you are doing lots of training, you need that fuel, so you need that slow, sustained release fuel, so they are really important, yeah. Okay, we have another question in um, about... What foods would you say are the best sources of protein? And it would be really useful if we could think from a vegetarian and vegan point of view as well. Yeah, totally. So protein, again, if we think about that plate, so we've got a fist-sized portion of carbohydrate and we want a palm-sized portion of protein. So that could be animal-based like meat, fish, chicken, eggs, yes. dairy products. But it could also be things like beans and lentils, nuts and seeds tofu and quinoa is a great yeah. source of protein. Nut butters, um, also tofu is quite good as well. You need lots of flavour with tofu, but it's a good protein for vegans and vegetarians. And speaking of um, you know, different diets, gluten-free is obviously something that we all have to be mindful of. We all know people that are having to be gluten-free. Is there any advice around sports nutrition with that? Well, if you have to be gluten-free, often people are gluten-free because they're celiac, for example, yeah. or they have a sensitivity. Um, being celiac is totally different to, to having a sensitivity. Yeah. It's quite a severe reaction. But if you are gluten-free, then again, you need to be going. You just, just be careful that you're not getting a lot of refined carbohydrates, not a lot of processed foods. So I would recommend still things like brown rice, quinoa, buckwheat, Buckwheat, even though it sounds like a chew of gluten in it, it's totally gluten-free. So there's great alternatives. And some people on a gluten-free diet can tolerate gluten-free oats. So I would go for those things like sweet potatoes and your root vegetables as your whole as your um, carbohydrate and not the kind of over-processed stuff, you know, yeah. you get that gluten-free aisle in the supermarket. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, some of it's okay, but a lot of it is really processed and high sugar as well. Yeah. We have another question, and the questions are coming in really well, and um, from Jacinta. So Jacinta wants to know from a nutritional point of view, and I want to know this too, um, loads of recipes come through in the healthy, like even Tony and Jen's recipe there had the maple syrup in it. Is that better for you than honey? I always try to buy my local honey, but would I be better buying maple syrup? Well, again, I would encourage you not to have too much maple syrup or too much honey or too much sugar in your diet because they're all forms of sugar. But... Maple syrup is, rel is, is relatively lower glycemic index than honey would be. But also, Anne, I do think I agree with you about buying local honey because actually there's some anecdotal evidence oh, nice. to show that it can help the pay fever. So, yeah, and it's also good to support our bees and our local <laughs> suppliers as well. So, so, you know, kind of mix and match up. The other one that I would use sometimes have on the cupboard is things like um, coconut sugar or you know, agave syrup. I try to use less of those and your taste buds will adjust. Yes. It was like what I was saying about the chocolate. You know, when people start eating dark chocolate, they're like, oh, I can't, it's too bitter. <laughs> but your taste buds definitely adjust. Yeah. 
think one of the things, I, having interacted so many times with um, our under-19 squads here all watching today, which is brilliant, I understand those players are still in education or they're, they're at tech or they're working and then they're rushing to training maybe three or four nights a week. And I just wonder, are there quick and easy recipe ideas or on-the-go snacks? Like, we know we shouldn't be having junk food, but if we're in the supermarket, are there easy things that we can fuel up on? Yes, absolutely. And I think, you know, there's so many demands on young women, and especially, as you said, they're juggling everything. So fast and easy. If you're nipping into a corner shop or into a garage, um, look for things like, what about a banana and a bag of nuts? Perfect. Yeah. Or yogurts, or you know, especially if you like natural or Greek yogurt, would be amazing. Um, also, you can get lots of little bags of trail mix in most supermarkets yes. as well, and protein bars, but not those ones. I'm not going to name any, but I'm not the ones <laughs> that are very, very processed. So I would go for like, a, excuse me, a nut bar yeah. rather than a very processed protein bar. And you can get ones with like a little bit of dark chocolate and lots of nuts. And they're lovely and pretty nutritious as well. And then equally, after training, like I'm looking out the window here and it's pouring down. And um, after training, you go home, you don't want to start to make a big meal. What can you have? Just because that recovery element of nutrition is so, so important. Yeah, it's absolutely vital. And one of the things that I would encourage women and girls to do is batch cook. Please learn to cook. Please, please learn to cook. It's the number one thing you could do for your health and your nutrition. But, you know, things like if you haven't got a spaghetti bolognese or a curry that you've cooked previously, what about something like an omelette, egg on toast, beans on toast, stir fries, have things in the freezer that are quick and handy. So you can get brilliant bags of frozen vegetables that are like char grilled Mediterranean, handful of those, maybe um, a little bit of the rice, you know, in the pouches you can get yeah. <laughs> some of that and some rice. Are you laughing? Because that's what you, you This eat. sounds like my <laughs> busy uh, working mom trying to feed two really hungry children dinner. Yes, <laughs> totally. And it's the same kind of things, isn't it? It's that fast food, but nutritious food. And yeah. that's the real key. And use your freezer. So if you are making something like a curry, make up an extra batch in a little Tupperware box, bung it in there, and then you can just pull it out and put it in the microwave. Yeah, sounds good. Um, over the last number of months, we've heard loads of chat about vitamin D, and I don't want to mention the yes. virus, but <laughs> how the vitamin D, there's some links um, around that. Now, obviously, looking at the weather here is horrible, so we're not going to get the same vitamin D just out and about. What can we do to supplement that within our diet? Okay, I do think it is very important for us to supplement because of where we live. And we do, you know, most of us have not been away over the summer. We've had our summer holidays in the North Coast or somewhere like that. Yeah. Um, so it is important to take a vitamin D supplement. And especially, you know, the girls and the women, you know, the young women that are watching this, our bone density reaches its peak around early 20s, late, late teens, early 20s. So please take a vitamin D supplement. Around about 2000 IU, you can get a brilliant little spray. There's loads of different brands, but it's just really easy to take. Um, and between October and May, ordinarily, I would say, take a supplement, and this year more than ever. And then in terms of other um, probiotics and things, should we be eating more yogurt now? Should we be more aware of our gut health? Really? Yeah. Yeah, again, there's a big link between our gut health and immunity, but also our gut health and mental health. This is also Mental Health Awareness Week or World Mental Health Week as well. Wow. So thinking about how we can support, and sport is so important for that, yeah. but thinking about how we can support our mental well-being. And certainly I would be considering things like probiotic yogurt and also try some of those weird and wonderful foods like kefir and kombucha. You know, you can find them in the supermarket and the, the fridge right beside your yogurts. And yeah. kombucha tastes a little bit like lemonade. Try a little bit at a time because it can, if you're not used to those, it can be quite strong. can make it's your digestive system yeah. a little it's bubbly. Quite, it's it's quite, quite nice with sparkling water if it is a bit too strong and it just sort of use it as a diluter. Yeah, um, that's a brilliant idea. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> there was another question that um, we had talked about in the office um, on Zoom this week around sources of calcium for vegans. Yeah, okay. Um, so obviously, us, the dairy industry in Northern Ireland is really strong and we're all encouraged um, to take plenty of yoghurt and cheese and milk to build up our calcium. W what do you do if you're vegan? Okay, if you're vegan, again, I would encourage 
if you're eating a vegan diet and especially if you're playing a lot of sport, I would encourage you to take a, a good supplement that's yeah. designed for a vegan diet to supplement, you know, to, to support what you're doing through your diet. But food sources, one of the very best sources of calcium are sesame seeds. So loads okay. of sesame seeds and loads of tahini. And you can use that in sauces or you can make your own hummus. Um, also really, really dark, dark, dark green leafy vegetables like broccoli, leeks, um, kale, and also nuts and seeds. You know, a handful of nuts and seeds every day. They're going to give you good fats, but they also give you lots of calcium as well. And Jane, I think you and I can talk about this all day. <laughs> <laughs> in terms then of meal planning, I know just for myself, not from a sports point of view, I always try and have fish in my diet every week. If you don't like, and I know some people are really can't take fish. If you don't, if you can't take fish and you don't like the taste of it, are there other um, sources you have of the oily, those omegas yes. you can get? Well, if you, if you are not vegetarian or vegan, I would suggest that you try cooking your fish in a different way. So okay. try, try putting it into some tin foil. Yep. You know, if you get some really nice, get a bit of salmon, put it in some, some tin foil, get a lemon wedge, get maybe some ginger, some chili, wrap it all up, or lime actually work better with that, wrap it up and put it in a parcel, or put in some soy sauce, ginger, um, chili, oh, you know, those kind of Thai. I hope my husband's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> maybe you, you'll get that for tea. You know, those kind of Thai Asian spices, and that will taste so good. Yeah. But if you really don't want to eat oily fish, then you do get some omega-3 through walnuts, chia and flaxseed, but the body can't use that quite as well because the types of, to put it really simply, the, the type of fats that are in those are shorter chain and it's almost like your body has to convert them into a different form to be able to use them. So again, a supplement might yeah. be an idea. I don't want to I don't want to kind of come no, across no. Like all about supplements. It's always food first, yeah. but maybe taking a, and especially again, if you're doing loads of sport and there's a lot, and it's high impact sport, because that can help support your joints and reduce inflammation as well. Yeah, and I do think we can chat for hours, but we're going to have to leave it probably in the next couple of minutes because we're moving on to our panel discussion. Did, did you play sports or do you play sports? I do play sports, so I, um, well, rather than play sports, I, I take part in a boot camp three times a week, I like kayak Gosh. and cycle and hike and run and, yeah, um, do lo lots of that. But I think it is absolutely vitally important for women and girls to be active, and I just have loved being part of this Game Changers okay. event. So thanks so much for inviting me. It's just been fab. <laughs> We've really enjoyed having you and all your energy and enthusiasm for it as well. And I'm sure if people... Maybe want to keep on the chat on hashtag Game Changers NI. There might be time for questions as well later on. So, yeah, thank you so much, Jane. Thank you, Anne. Cheerio. Bye. <laughs>